be in an attitude of prayer because we are coming to meet with the creator of heaven and earth. You are welcome into this place, Lord, because you are God and there is no one like you. Thank you, Father, Lord. We glorify your holy name. Thank you, Father, Lord. We glorify your holy name. It's another Sunday. We are grateful. We are grateful for the opportunity. We are grateful for the opportunity. You are welcome to God's city today. If you have the facility to share, if you are on Facebook Live, please share this to your friends, your loved ones. Let them partake of what God is about to do in our midst today. You are welcome to God's city, everyone. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you here today. We thank you for your participation today. We acknowledge you because you have preeminence on everything we're doing today. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Come and take full control of everything we're doing here today. No man will take the glory that's only due to God. No human being will take it. Only God, only God will take glory in our midst today. Father, Lord, we thank you. We glorify your holy name. We worship you. We glorify your holy name. We thank you. Because you are God and there's none like you. Thank you, Father. Ooh. Now, we want to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity you have given us to come together as a church. Father Lord, we worship you. We adore you. We glorify your holy name, Lord, because you are the one who has made it possible for us to come together here today. Father, Lord, we glorify your holy name. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for who you are. Father, Lord, be highly exalted. Be highly exalted in our midst today. Because you are God and there's none like you. Thank you, Father, Lord. We glorify your holy name. In Jesus' Jesus mighty Christ. name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. I welcome all of you to today's service at, at God City. I, I thank you wherever it is you may be watching from. I just want you to know that um, you are welcome to the presence of God because the presence of God is here today. Uh, all month long, we have been doing a series titled Winning Souls. We have been doing this series because... We believe that at this time in our in our in our in our journey, we all need to be aware of something that is extremely important beyond all of the distractions that is happening to us. And that is it's a time for us to actually accelerate, increase, and amplify winning of souls. You know, people are busy, they are busy building businesses. They are busy building empires. They are building busy. Uh, they are busy building houses, and there's nothing wrong in any of that. But if you look at the context, you know that in the context of eternity, those things are absolutely nothing. And so, whilst it's important to do what you need to do while you are here, you must not get so distracted that you forget where you are going. It's just it's just, it's just like the balance of a man who is traveling. And along the way, they are getting into different cities. And this individual is feeling like, oh, uh, you know, I'm supposed to, you know, they're fixated on the different uh, destinations that the journey is taking them through. And they're forgetting the, where, where it is they are supposed to be going. So it's extremely important for everyone to remember that our destination is not here. If you if you if you if you remember that it will make you think more on um, it will make you think more on 
how, on the things that you do because a lot of people are doing stuff that uh, are not really in any manner shape or form um, very important people are are putting effort on things that are not really important mm. so it, it makes you it makes you wonder because if you think about the end in mind then you will know that you know your decisions will be different you will not do the things you are doing the way you are doing it if you know that this is not the end of things so winning souls is extremely important it's extremely extremely important so let's get into what we're doing today i want you guys to know that last week i told you that um i was teaching and i've, I've always been a teacher of the word mm. but this week i'm going to be a preacher and you are going to see the difference there a teacher is always adding precepts upon precepts going into different directions finding ev evidences and knitting them together to weave uh, uh, a fabric that presents the case that is being that is being uh, looked at a preacher amplifies a preacher takes a few points and amplifies them in order to recreate an important point so today i'm going to be a preacher forgive me but that is what today uh, the, uh, you know that's that's what goes for today and I pray that God, the Holy Spirit, will speak through me in Jesus' name. Amen. So, let's get started. We're looking at Jesus, the evangelist today. Jesus, the evangelist. All month long, we've been looking at what evangelism is supposed to be. We started to look at the Great Commission. Understanding the Great Commission, which is the only task that God has given to, to us to do. Because a lot of people are starting churches, a lot of people are starting ministries, but somehow we tend to forget what the end plan is. That the end plan is so that more people will be won into the kingdom of God. That's what it's all about. And if we forget that, then we forget what is most important, which is to win other people into the kingdom of God before all of this wraps up, before all of this is over and done with. And so I was trying to help us understand how best to go about that. The following week, we looked at the actual winning of souls, why it's important to win souls, why the Bible says anybody who wins souls is wise. And the week after that, we were able to look at telling other people about Jesus, telling other people about Jesus. And that's because I believe that I'm so passionate about it. And everybody that's had my testimony before, forgive me that I'm repeating it. When you are dealing with a worldwide audience, sometimes there's always somebody new joining us, which is why I'm reiterating it. I did not become born again for a long time because of the way I was evangelized to. I just found it highly irritating and most of the efforts did not represent Jesus at all. Mm. So it just made me very angry. So I knew I wanted to connect with God, but the people that said they were representing him, they were not very good examples at all. And I'm not one of those people to deceive myself. I'm not one of those people to do things just because it's popular. I have to do it because I was convinced. And most of the people representing Jesus were not doing a good job. So I'm just like, you know what? It took me a long time before I finally now found Jesus for myself. And so I'm actually very, I'm very passionate. I'm very, very passionate about telling others and helping others to 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 evangelize about jesus this is something i'm extremely passionate about so last week we looked at how you can tell other people about jesus and i said if jesus is not working in your life you have not earned the right to go and tell other people about jesus because that will make you like a fake representative so you are you are selling something to others that has not quite worked for you so what what are you selling something that you are not sure is working something you are not sure if it's working for you or not so I urge people to have testimonies. I urge people to, to try their best to know God for themselves first before they can go around running around trying to sell that to other people. So I want to just tell you today that I, I just want us to look at Jesus the evangelist. And in order for us to do that, I believe that we need to look at his life, what he did, and how he did it. So we, we, we thank God. We, we give God all the glory. 
So we're starting from Luke chapter 4, verses 18 to 19. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 to 19. If, you have, if, if there is somebody who is still new in the faith and they do not understand what Christianity is all about, refer them to these verses. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 to 19. Because this is where Jesus described his manifesto. That's what he came to do. So everything that Jesus did was informed from these two verses. Everything that he did. There's nothing he did that wasn't informed from these two verses. And I start to read from the New King James Version. He says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Guys, everything that Jesus came to do can be captured in all these things that I've just shared with you. Which means that if we want to take our cue from what Jesus did, we need to, we need to, know, we need to familiarize ourselves with everything that he did. So let's go over it in a way that will be beneficial to us. So let's look at them. So we're looking at number one. You, we, he, he said he has been he has been said to preach. Jesus came to preach. So everybody, you must be preaching at one point or the other in your life. He said he has been set to come and heal. So every child of God, born again child of God, at one point or the other, you must be administering healing. He said he has been said to come and proclaim. Proclaim means to come and declare something, for you to come and shout about it. In fact, the, the original word it comes from is, is related to the word shouting. Proclaim. Trumpet. It's like blowing a trumpet. You are proclaiming something. Like a megaphone. You are proclaiming. So at some point, you should be proclaiming. And he said he has been sent to come and recover. That means anything that is lost... We should be in the business of recovery. And he said he has been sent to come and set captives free. So anything that sets other people free should be our assignment. And then he ended up by saying again that he has been sent to come and proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So guys, I want you to take some time and take a look at these verbs, right? You got to preach. You got to heal, you got to proclaim, you got to recover, you got to set free, and you got to continue to proclaim. So, when we bring this back to what is happening in our world today, we discover that many of us are not really doing this. We are setting up churches, some of us. We are calling for members, some of us. And then we are sitting inside those rooms and not doing much. And we just keep recycling the same message over and over and over again. And this is where I feel you know, many, many or much part of the body of Christ have been missing out on it. Because we missed out on the original instruction. The original instruction was to go, not stay. Go. Go and make disciples of other people. You can't go by sitting down. You can't go by sitting inside four walls. You've got to go and do something. So Jesus Christ declared what he came to do from the beginning. And he was not missing what about it. He made it clear to those people that, guys, this is what I've come to do. And if you read the story of Jesus and from any gospel, any part of the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, everything fits into these two verses. He proclaimed, he preached. He healed. He recovered. Mm. He continued to proclaim. He came to set the captives free. Mm. That was all Jesus came to do. So Jesus is an evangelist. In fact, for those who may not be Bible students, Jesus represents all of the fivefold ministries that was distributed to, to us after he went back to heaven. So Jesus is an apostle. Mm. Jesus is a preacher. Jesus is a teacher. 
Jesus is an evangelist. Jesus is a prophet. All of it is embodied inside of Christ. And what we were given the task of doing was to make other people like Jesus. So if you if you have the gift of prophecy, you are supposed to help other children of God prophesy. They may not necessarily be uh, sitting in the office like you do, but help them to access prophecy. If you are an evangelist, evangelize God's children. If you are if you are if you are a preacher, preach. If you are a teacher, teach, so that all of us can come to the fullness of the of the measure in Christ. You understand? We are so, the, the goal is for us to become like Jesus. But what did we do? Human beings. We started denominations. We started dividing ourselves. We started saying we are right, you are wrong. I'm right, you are wrong. That's what we started to do. That wasn't what Jesus asked us to do. He said, go and disciple people and make them like me. Make them like me. So that means we are, meant, we are meant to bring different dimensions of Jesus together. So there may be some people that will have a strength in certain area. They are supposed to help the others in that area. And some people will have strength in, in other areas. We are supposed to mix it together so that together we all become better. But everybody, we've turned it to division. And we've turned it, using it as a barrier against each other. That's not what Jesus asks us to do. So Jesus, without a shadow of a doubt, was an evangelist. He was an evangelist. And he expects us to be evangelists. So let's keep going. So, in Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 to 24, Matthew chapter 4, 23 to 24, and I read from the New King James Version. It says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Guys, can you take time and look at that? Almost everything in his manifesto is in that, in, it's in, in the first three lines. So after he has declared what he came to do, he now went about teaching, preaching, healing. And then his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments. And those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. Another version says, and he healed them all. Guys, there's an important aspect of our mission that we're not doing, that we're not doing very well at. Which is the aspect of displaying power. Mm. Omo, you can't teach me to death now. After some time, I need you to, I need to see some power flowing through you. So that I know God is with you. You can't come and lecture me to death now. After a while, I'll get bored. How many times can we teach Noah's story? How many times can we teach Abraham's story? Um, after a while, the story is not getting, it's not catching me again. I don't know if I'm the only one who forgive me, or maybe I'm just being carnal, forgive me. Or... After some time, your story will tire me now. So I'm begging everyone listening to me. I'm pleading with you. Power is available. Make sure you are a vessel that carries power. It does not mean all your problems will be solved. That's also a lie. You know, there are some people that go around that, hey, once you, once you know Jesus, all your problems are solved. It's a lie. It's a lie. But you stand a chance of solving everything that comes your way. You stand a chance of solving everything that comes your way. That's the only promise God has given us. Mm -hmm. He didn't say the problem will be finished. He didn't say all of it will, will go. But at least we are going to be performing better than if we're not with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I'm begging everyone listening to me. I'm pleading with you. Enough of all these lectures. There are too many lectures in the body of Christ. One person will come and give us grammar from morning to night. Another person will come and give us grammar from another direction. Okay, after your grammar now, oh yeah, lay hands on the sick now. Let's see some things happening. Let us see God moving. Set people who are captive. Set them free. I'm saying this to you passionately. I'm not saying it like somebody who has attained. I'm saying it as somebody who is pressing towards the mark of a higher calling. I'm begging everybody looking to me. If you want your life, if you want to evangelize to other people, let your life evangelize to them. 
Let them see how God is helping you through your problems. And then they will know that God is with you. I'm not saying, I'm saying everybody will be millionaires. Mm -hmm. No, everybody won't be millionaires. But let even in your own level, let them see how God is meeting with you. Mm -hmm. That is your evangelism. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nigeria, oh my God, Nigeria, Nigeria. I'm praying for you. I know my wife is looking at me because she knows where I'm going with this. I'm going to try and temper it. Nigeria, I'm praying for you guys. Oh. Nigerian people can quote Bible. And the results are not in many of their lives. And they will just be quoting, 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 quoting. It, it, it makes it sound like a scar. You've been quoting this thing 20 years. We can't see the results in your life. You are still quoting it to me again. Get to know the God behind the scriptures. Let that God be real to you. Amen. Then when you are talking to people, your testimony will be real. Amen. If you go and listen to anything I've preached, go to our website, our Nigerian website or my YouTube channel. Everything that I've preached, I will put my personal experience and my personal testimony there. Because it's real to me. I'm not just preaching letters. I'm preaching the letters I have lived. I'm preaching something that, has, that is working for me. Look, I'll be teacher. I can teach on any topic that I don't necessarily understand. Or if you are a teacher, all you have to do is just take a look at the work the day before now. Or a few hours before. And you go and teach it. You may not even understand it yourself. But you are good at delivering it. And that's, that's where many, many of God's children are. They are going around talking about Jesus they don't know. They are going around talking about God they don't have any personal relationship with. Mm -hmm. And the people you are talking to, they can suss you out. This person, they don't have any grounds they are standing on. They don't have any legs they are standing on. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ came and said, guys, this is who I am. And do you know how he came to, 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 to reach there? Because he followed the process. I know Pastor Demola will be laughing now because this is part of his upcoming book. Jesus followed the process. Many people want to jump from A to Z mm -hmm. in one day. They want to jump from A to Z in one day. Uh, guys, don't go and kill yourself. Follow process. Do you know what Jesus did? 30 years he first walked to show us that it's okay to walk mm -hmm. and, to show, and to build relationship and to be part and parcel of the community. He walked 30 years. Process of preparation. And he was pre was he was pre was getting himself ready, mm. and when the fullness of time came, he went to John the Baptist to be baptized. Mm. Are you are you seeing process mm. so that he can actually he can actually be be prepared? And after he was baptized, what happened? Holy Spirit came upon him. Mm. Guys, what did the Holy Spirit do? Holy Spirit led him into fasting. Mm. Hey, I hope somebody is listening to me. Because I'm telling you, I'm telling you that you have to follow the process. You, can, you cannot skip the process. If, if God, the Holy Spirit, has not activated you, you can't do anything for God. You can't represent God on any level whatsoever. You cannot do it. So Jesus made sure he was baptized. I'm not asking anybody to go and be baptized in water. That's not what I'm saying. That was what was happening at his time. So he fulfilled all righteousness. It was John the Baptist that was reigning at the time. And he was reigning about repentance. So he went to John the Baptist for baptism. So that he can fulfill all righteousness. But the, the most poignant part of that baptism was that God, the Holy Spirit, opened up on him. And God said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And what happened after? The Holy Spirit led him to the wilderness for 40 days of fasting. Guys, are you seeing processes? Are you seeing processes? From that time on, the Bible tells us, and his fame grew. There was no CNN. Mm. There was no internet. There was no Facebook. From that time, after he defeated Satan in that wilderness, his fame started growing. Mm. I'm begging everybody listening to me, don't go and stand and representing God unless you have received power. I'm begging you, don't become a casualty. The people you are, you are contending with, they are real. The witches are real. The wizards are real. Satan is real. Don't be afraid of him, but be well equipped before you face him. I'm begging you. There are so many, so many unnecessary uh, collateral in, in, under the name of evangelism. You are trying to preach Christ you don't know. 
Like the son of Sceva now, you saw, you saw how the demon beat the living daylight out of them. They didn't have power and they were evangelizing. They didn't have power, but they were evangelizing. So I'm begging you, Jesus Christ followed the process and he was equipped. He had power. Then he stepped out. Do you know that sometimes even Jesus will get to some places, the demons will be begging, don't cast us out. He has not even laid hands on them. It is darkness that should be running from light, Amen. not the other way around. Many, many Christians today, especially we from Africa, when we are going home, our liver is shaking. Is it not darkness that's supposed to be running away from us? Why are we scared of, of darkness? Because we, we are not fully equipped yet. When you are fully equipped, you will be, you will be confident. Say nothing. I remember those days. We used to follow a Nigerian man of God called Aunzia. Aunzia was crazy. Many people have said many things about him, but I can testify to you. At some point, that guy knew God. I don't care what anybody says. At some point in his life, he knew God. He knew God. You see? Because this guy, he, he, he would leave Lagos 12 midnight with a convoy of cars, like five cars. And people would be saying, ah, daddy, is he not dangerous? He said, me, the son of Jesus, who can stand on my way? How is that we drive 12 midnight into the interlands of Nigeria? Very dangerous. 12 midnight. He didn't care. He said, look, I'm the son of Jesus. They are the ones that will run away from me. At that time, I leave, I didn't carry it all, but I learned something from that man. I learned something from him. Guys, if, if the light is in you, darkness will run away from Amen. you. You're not the one that's supposed to be running away from you. Will see, like, you will see uh, born again children of God. They will go to other people's houses. They'll be waiting for the other person to eat first before they eat. Have you not read Mark 16, verses 17 and 18, that you shall eat, you shall eat poison and it shall not do anything to you? You are even more afraid than people that don't have Jesus here. So, we, 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 we've got to realize and we've got to know that power is needed to evangelize. Jesus knew that. He did not step out until he was activated. He was activated for ministry by the Holy Spirit. So, when he came out of that 40-day fasting, he was fire. The first thing he did, John chapter 2, he turned water into wine. That's the level of power he carried to, end, to start his ministry. And many people are starting ministry with no power. Mm -hmm. I'm pleading with all of you. I'm begging you. Every child of God listening to me. As I'm telling you here, in my few years in ministry, I've been tried and tested. I've been on the podium before and somebody was trying to ca you know, cast a, a hex on me while I was preaching. Mm -hmm. I've been on podium before. I see, you, I see myself. It's almost like they, they should rush me to hospital mm -hmm. because somebody is trying something in the audience. Guys, I'm begging of you, in order for you to be light in your world, you need power. You need God's power. And you must do everything to get it. Then with boldness, you will step out. So when you say Jesus, your Jesus, it, 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 it means something. It's not just a name. It carries power with it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, moving on. Like I told you, I'm preaching, so forgive me. So that, that, that is the way it's going to be today. That is the leading of the Holy Spirit for today. So John the Baptist came preaching repentance. Jesus came to evangelize us for the kingdom. That was what Jesus came to do. He came to equip us for the kingdom of God. And guys, I have news for you. We are already in the kingdom of God now. It is still invisible. But it's already in operation. Jesus brought it with him. So you need to do everything to activate your citizenship in that kingdom. Mm. So that you can, you, can, you can fulfill everything that God has, has, um, has, has given you to do. Including evangelizing. So let's look at John chapter 14 verses 1 to 3. John 14, 1 to 3. And he says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So guys, I'm saying it to you. That was what Jesus came to do. He came to activate his own so that he can go and prepare a place for us. Let me tell you the top level. Jesus is going to come back suddenly and take those that make it with him. Those that he takes with him would reign with him in heaven for 1,000 years. During that time, those that don't make it will still be here on earth. But that time, there will be no protection from Satan. So they are going to face the full wrath of Satan. A few of them are still going to make it, but many will not make it. So let me repeat it to you again. Jesus is going to come suddenly and take his people with him to a place he has prepared up for us in heaven, the new Jerusalem. He has been building, he's been constructing it, and he is, he's, he's adorning it, he's, he's furnishing it for us. So that's what he was referring to in John chapter 14. We all, we all have mansions there. But that is second coming is going to come suddenly. Many people will not be expecting it. That's why no matter what you are involved in, you must not take your eyes off the ball. Because Jesus is coming back again. And his next coming will catch a lot of, a lot of people by surprise. He said it himself. He said just like in the days of Noah, people were getting married. People were drinking and partying. That's how it will be when he comes. In the days of Noah, guys, many people were unprepared. Only eight people made it. Eight people plus animals. May, may we all make it in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. So that is what evangelism is all about. Preparing us for the kingdom. Preparing us for the kingdom. So that was Jesus' mission. That's what he came to do. He, he came to prepare us for heaven. And I've spoken about this. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 to 12. It says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Guys, everything God has given us, this is what he's for. So that we can equip God's children. So that they can go and, you know, we can use it in our work of ministry and equipping saints so that we can edify the body of Christ. We can lift them up to the status of Christ. That is the goal. We may not reach it, but that is the where, that is the target. So that everybody can be like Jesus. It's not meant for us to build churches. It's not meant for us to build denominations or congregations. That's not what it's for. Now, let's look at the objectives. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 13 to 15. Ephesians 4, 13 to 15. Till, till... We all come to the unity of faith, of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I know that sounds like a lot of English. Let me break it down. All of the gift he has given us is so that all of us can reach a, an acceptable level that looks like Jesus. That's what it's all about. We're all at different state of the journey. But the whole idea of ministry is we keep building people up until they rise up to that acceptable standard. That is Jesus. Jesus represents 100% of that thing. But so that all of us can at least be closer to that. Mm. Glory to God. Yeah. So that we should no longer be children. If you know how many children are in the body of Christ. Some of them, will, they will listen to me in the morning. They will go to Babalawo in the afternoon. They will go to white garments in the evening. Are, are those not children? Children that are, that are being tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men. Bible has said everything. You know, people just don't read the Bible. Bible has said everything that will happen. Everything from beginning to end. If you know how many people are being tricked by all sorts of false prophets across the world. And they are being tricked because they don't know who they are. They don't know who they are because they've not read the manual to find out who God made them. 
And because they don't know who they are, they are being tricked by other people that, sh that shouldn't be able to even touch them. He says, by the trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Ah, oh, my Bible is, 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 Bible is, is powerful. Go and read this in any other version you can. You will see the secret God has re revealed in these two verses alone. Ephesians 4, 13 to 15. In the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head of Christ. Who is the head? Christ. So everything we're doing must be wrapped up in love. Love is what makes it happen, that makes it work. Do you know that faith can't work without love? Even faith can't work without love. That is the idea, guys. That's what God planned. That's what God had in mind. Jesus raised disciples and mentored them and gave them the charge to disciple the entire world. You see, Jesus' plan was simple. He called 12 people to him. Those 12 called 70. Those 70 called the multitude. So the idea is he was able to breathe onto those people so they can go and disseminate the message to the entire world. Mm. All of the disciples that Jesus called, they were the ones that carried the gospel to, the no, to their known world. Thomas, the doubting Thomas, took it to India. The guy, Joseph Arimitius, brought it to United Kingdom. He landed in Kent. All of these people were scattered all over the world. All those people that Jesus you know, mentored, they took that gospel physically into their known world from where the rest of the world was able to get it. That was the whole idea. That was the whole idea. That was all that God had in mind. So I'm urging everyone listening to me, go and disciple your word. Go and disciple your word. Go and disciple your word. If you are a born again child of God, something in your life should be affecting people next to you. If it is not doing so, you are not being fully obedient to what God has asked you to do. You are not being fully obedient to that. And it's very important that you are. It's very important that you, you stay obedient to what God has said, you must disciple your word. I told my wife recently, I said, till the Lord takes me or till Jesus comes, whichever one happens sooner, I'm no longer going to be involved with anybody that I'm not ministering to. Mm. Let, me, let me rephrase that. It doesn't mean I will not talk to people that I'm not preaching to. But if I'm having anything to do with you, I must be ministering to you on one level or the other. Till God takes me away or till Jesus comes. Because what was the purpose of having any kind of other relationship mm. that you can't tell them about what is most important to you? What's the point? Mm. That's a decision I just made. So, you and you guys are way younger than I am. So, you, you still got time. But the world doesn't got time anymore. Mm. Unfortunately, nobody knows the actual time, but we know that we are close to it. Because he has mm. given us clues and hints. Mm. So, the reason I've gone through this this month is very, very simple. It is just to remind us, to charge us, to tell us that, guys, this is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. It is not just about sitting down in churches, populating churches. Oh, we have 100,000 members, 200,000 members. We have 55 branches, 76 branches. All of that are meant to be instruments to help disseminate the message not a solution in themselves they are not a solution in themselves they are meant to help disseminate this gospel and i'm charging everyone listening to me go and disciple your word go and disciple your word I, I i'm begging you because the bible says he who wins souls is wise can you imagine there's party in heaven for one person that gives their life to christ they throw party in heaven so you don't want to make them throw party on your behalf? I, I, I want them to throw party on my behalf. That look, I was able to influence one person and, and, and brought them in, into, in, into the kingdom. That's what it's all about. And I pray that God will fill us all of, all, 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 all of us up with wisdom. That most importantly, in fact, okay, I'm being instructed. Um, I need to pray that the Holy Spirit be activated over you. I'm being instructed to do that now. 
So if you can stretch your hands to your screen. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, according to your instruction, you've asked me to pray for the activation of the Holy Spirit for those listening to me. In the name of Jesus Christ, the name that is above every other name, I ask, Father Lord, that the Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, be activated over your children in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father Lord, let it land over them right now in Jesus' Amen. name. Father Lord, we thank you, we honor you, we glorify your holy name. We thank you, Father Lord, because we know that everyone that this happened to, they became another person. Amen. Father Lord, let the testimonies abound because of your instruction. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Amen and amen. amen. We've got the details on your screen. If you want to give an offering to God, you have the opportunity to do so through this broadcast. You've got our account in the United Kingdom for those that that may be useful to. We've got our account in Nigeria to those that that may be useful for. And you can use PayPal or Cash App. For those who may be in America and United Kingdom, wherever that, feel free to bless us. We 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 are open to blessings, and but most importantly, make an offering unto the Lord because He's the one that will reward those who give. Mm -hmm. Glory to God, mm -hmm. Father Lord, we thank you. Thank you we honor you. We adore you. Mm -hmm. We say there's none like you, mm -hmm. Father Lord. We pray over the offering right now mm -hmm. for those who are giving wherever they may be. And those who are in the presence of even giving as we speak, as you are showing to me. My Lord and my God, I pray over that offering that Father Lord will be acceptable before you. Amen. And Father Lord, you will reward them bountifully. Amen. And all the glory will go to your holy name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 amen and amen. amen. Until Wednesday, when we will have time for questions and answers and contributions. I just want to thank all of you for tuning in. And I ask God to, to bless all of you. In Jesus' name, until next time again. Bye for now. Bye.